Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Ryan, and I am the president of the University of Virginia. Uh, I am delighted to see and welcome all of you to this truly special and exciting day. Speaking personally, um, the last time I was this excited was earlier this week when I had a chance to meet Steph Curry uh, at a UVA basketball game, which means I'm very, very excited. Um, I'd like to extend a special welcome to Governor Glenn Youngkin and First Lady Suzanne Youngkin. Um, we are here today to make the formal announcement of what I see as a landmark, not only in the history of this university, but also in the history of medical research and treatment in the Commonwealth and beyond. I realize that what I'm about to say may seem like a slight exaggeration, and I say this admittedly as an American studies major in college and a lawyer by training who has no expertise in medicine. But I believe that we are at the dawn of a revolution in medical treatment. Today, there are more than 9,500 diseases without a cure, and one in 10 Virginians suffers from a rare disease without a cure. In the past, these diseases, which range from various types of cancer to Alzheimer's to sickle cell disease, have seemed intractable. But advances in biotechnology, and in particular gene and cellular therapy, as well as immunotherapy, have given great cause for hope because they represent a new an incredibly promising way of attacking these diseases. If I'm right, the next quarter century or so will be the age of biotechnology, and we will see advances that rival or exceed the advances in information technology that we've seen in the last quarter century. That is why it is my pleasure and honor to announce the creation of the Paul and Diane Manning Biotechnology Institute at the University of Virginia. This institute will be an innovative translational research center that will bring new medical treatments to those who need them most. This institute, as you might have guessed from the name, is made possible by a stunningly generous gift of $100 million from Paul and Diane Manning. The Manning gift will be combined with an historic investment from the Commonwealth, thanks to the strong support of Governor Yonkin and key members of the General Assembly. The university is also contributing $150 million to this effort in alignment with our 2030 strategic plan, which calls for a focus on precision medicine. It is difficult to overstate the importance of this institute to UVA and to the Commonwealth. The Manning Institute will be the hub of UVA's research program in biotechnology. It will include a state-of-the-art building centered on the research, development, commercialization, and manufacturing of new cellular gene and immunotherapies. It will bring together researchers and scientists from biomedical engineering and chemical sciences at the university, and it will create new opportunities for students and faculty to be at the forefront of medical science. It will foster an environment that inspires, supports, accelerates, and promotes discoveries and innovation, even for healthcare challenges that have until now seemed insurmountable. And it will supply the infrastructure and resources that are needed to bring discoveries from the bench to the bedside as quickly as we can. The Manning Institute will also play an important economic role for the broader community. If we do this right, and we will work tirelessly to do this right, the Institute will attract both startups and established biotech firms and help accelerate the growth of UVA in the city of Charlottesville as a formidable, formidable hub of innovation. Our plans go even further than this, however, as we expect the Institute's reach will extend to citizens across the Commonwealth through participation in clinical trials throughout Virginia and through the manufacturing facility, which will be a part of the Institute and which will be available to researchers from our sister institutions across the Commonwealth. This is not, in other words, about UVA per se, nor is it about an institute that might just help the university. This is about creating an avenue by which UVA can help improve and save lives 
throughout the Commonwealth. None of this would be possible without the visionary generosity of Paul and Diane Manning. For those of you who don't know him, Paul is an incredibly successful entrepreneur and the founder of the PBM Capital Group, which is based in Charlottesville. Paul and Diane have been heavily involved with philanthropy and healthcare through their family foundation, and Paul has served on UVA's Health Foundation Board, as well as on the steering committee for the university's strategic planning process back in 2013. Diane has been involved with a number of boards and organizations, including serving as director of the Manning Family Foundation and co-founder of Focus to Cure Diabetes Foundation. In 2010, she received the inaugural Richmond Dining in the Dark Visionary Award for her dedication to fighting blindness. Paul and Diane have already given generously to health research at UVA as well as to UVA athletics. They have three children who are all UVA graduates. My wife Katie and I have had the good fortune to get to know Paul and Diane, and I can tell you there are few people who rival their combination of commitment, generosity, goodwill, and good humor. Paul and Diane, I am incredibly grateful to call you friends, and I'm both grateful and in awe of your relentless commitment to serving patients and their families. I'd also like to thank Governor Yonkin, whom we will hear from in a few moments. He has been a champion of scientific advances in healthcare, and I'm grateful for his partnership and his confidence in the University of Virginia. In addition, it has been a genuine pleasure to work with many elected and appointed officials from the Commonwealth on this initiative, including Speaker Todd Gilbert, who is with us today. For those in Richmond who have helped us along the way, um, let me just say that we share your excitement and your commitment to ensure that this investment pays off for all Virginians. Thanks as well to Dr. Craig Kent, CEO of UVA Health, for lending his leadership and expertise to the development of the Manning Institute. Craig and his team have been instrumental in the design and the planning of this effort, and his wise counsel has been incredibly valuable throughout. Finally, I'd like to thank UVA's Provost Ian Balcom for his wisdom and advice on incorporating the Manning Institute in the, into the academic mission of the university. Ian and his team have provided and will continue to provide outstanding academic leadership as the institute grows from an idea into reality. Before I turn it over to the rector of the university, Whit Clement, let me say a final word about the promise of the Manning Institute. We often say that UVA is a place that strives to be both great and good in all that we do. When people ask me what does that mean, I usually cite a few examples to help explain. So too here. The Manning Institute will bring together world-class researchers in biotechnology who will help bring life-changing and life-saving treatments to those who need them the most. That is what great and good looks like. Thanks again to all of you for being here, and with that, I'd like to ask my friend and my boss, Rector Clement, to come to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, President Ryan. Paul, Diane, uh, on behalf of all the members of the Board of Visitors, we are most grateful for this incredibly wonderful gift that's going to fund an institute whose research and discovery is going to mean so much to so many people in our commonwealth, in our nation, and, and worldwide. We are proud and deeply honored that you have you've entrusted us uh, through your philanthropy uh, for cutting edge uh, research. It's a real historic day at the university, and we really can't thank you enough. My main duty, <clears throat> other than to express our deep appreciation, is to introduce two very special guests whom the president has already mentioned. Each is going to offer his own comments. The Speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates, and of course, our governor. First, Speaker Todd Gilbert. Todd is one of our own, a graduate of the college where he earned his degree in 1993. He went on 
to gain his law degree from SMU. Todd's service in the House for the last almost 17 years really epitomizes Virginia's long history of producing public servants who serve in leadership roles in state government. Todd is a major figure, along with the governor, of course, in how our state operates. Todd and his wife, Jennifer, have two small children. They live in Woodstock in the Shenandoah Valley. We're also honored, of course, to have <clears throat> with us Governor Glenn Youngkin, who, as President Ryan has mentioned, uh, has been a stalwart supporter of advancing healthcare research and technology initiatives in the Commonwealth. He, along with many of our friends in the General Assembly, like Speaker Gilbert, have been instrumental in making this important institute a reality. As many of you know, Governor Yonkin is a native of Virginia Beach. He obtained his engineering degree from Rice University and his MBA from Harvard. Before his successful run for governor in 2021, he had been with the Carlisle Group, an international investment firm, for 25 years and eventually rose <clears throat> to the position of co-CEO. He and our First Lady, Suzanne, who we're also very happy that you're with us today, have been married for 28 years, have four children, and one of them is doing research at the hospital, so thank you also for being here. Governor, the university looks forward to building this partnership with the Commonwealth, as President Ryan has mentioned. We want that partnership so that the Manning Institute can reach its full potential. We hope that this institute and its groundbreaking work will be as much a part of your legacy as it will be the Manning family. So thank you again, and I'd now like to recognize my friend, Todd Gilbert. Thank you. Well, um, Governor Youngkin, President Ryan, Rector Clement, Mr. and Mrs. Manning, honored guests, it, it is a delight to be with you today. I had my staff, as staffs do, uh, said, here are your remarks for today. And I said, well, I think I'd rather tell a story because I have a story to tell here. Um, it started with a phone call, a phone call from my closest friend and confidant in uh, on and off again roommate. You know, we have to save money when we're in Richmond in the House of Delegates, and that would be one Rob Bell. Many of you know Rob uh, is the representative from just over the, the uh, artificial border in Albemarle County. Uh, Rob is what they call a double who. Um, I am not one of those. And when people ask, you know, they, they, I told them I went to school here and they say, well, did you go to law school? Also, my response is always, no, they didn't want me back, <laughs> which is just my fault, really. It's not your fault. It's no one's <laughs> fault. It's my fault. Um, but Rob Bell worked very hard when he was in school here, and so he has the honor of being a double who. And I got that call, and it's not unusual for me to get a call from Rob Bell. I get five calls a day from Rob Bell, and have for years, because he's always thinking about something, trying to fix something, trying to navigate something. He really is the hardest working member of the House of Delegates. And Rob called and said that he had a friend and constituent who I needed to meet with, who was thinking of making a historic investment in the university and in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And so I gladly uh, agreed to come and meet with Mr. Manning at his lovely home. Uh, we drove out there, Rob was there, and we just sat down and talked. And for about an hour, I got to hear Mr. Manning's vision of what healthcare was going to look like 10 years from now. And I was hooked and I was sold. And it was my understanding then that, that um, not only was he prepared to step up and make this historic investment, the university was prepared to do that, and they needed a partner, an equal partner in, in the state, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, to step up and embrace this concept and, and help bring it to fruition. Now, at any point, when it sounds like I'm boasting about our participation in this thing, those of us in government 
it's easier to spend other people's $100 million than it is to spend your own $100 million. So I am not equating any of this in any way with, with your personal sacrifice of your treasure, um, and it, it is an incredible thing. So, but for this to happen, certain things needed to happen. So we uh, hatched a plan. Uh, we were just coming back into the majority in Richmond, uh, the Republican caucus, and we needed to have our incoming um, money people invested in this, literally, figuratively. They needed to buy in to this idea. And so we hatched a plan to all go together and meet with the incoming chairman of appropriations in Norfolk. And we all sat down together, the university, Mr. Manning, Rob, me, and uh, the chairman of appropriations, Barry Knight, and, um, and talked through the same thing. And it was really incredible how um, Chairman Knight bought in, and, and I remember having a conversation with him, telling him how important this was to me uh, as a, a product of this university and as a citizen of this commonwealth. And I said, Barry, at some point, this concept, what's gonna be built here, is gonna save your life, or it's gonna save mine, or it's gonna save somebody you care about, or somebody I care about, and just extrapolate that out across the thousands of people that are gonna be affected um, by this new frontier in medicine. And um, whether it's from you know, our families or yours or the Commonwealth or the United States or really across the world, people are gonna come here uh, for the treatments that are gonna be developed here and applied here in this fascinating uh, new world of, of medicine that we're, we're looking at right now. And I couldn't be happier uh, to have played a small part in bringing this all to fruition. And I think it was fortuitous that, that two sons of this university were in just happened to be at a place at a time that, that we could help make this a reality. And so for our part, uh, we are delighted to be uh, involved and to be partners with you. And, and it, for my part, if I have anything to do with it, if I have any longevity in Richmond, we're just getting started. So I, I thank you for, for this opportunity, Mr. Manning, Ms. Manning, I appreciate uh, your historic investment and your vision. Um, and uh, thank you so much. Yes, sir. So I almost forgot, it, it, it became late in the game, I realized my duty uh, to do the honors here today, and it, uh, it is truly my honor uh, to introduce His Excellency, the Governor of Virginia. It, he, is a, he is a fantastic, likewise a fantastic partner, I think it likewise has bought in uh, to the vision. He is a visionary, and he is a hard worker, and I, I want you and Rob Bell, if I, if I could keep a clock on who's getting up earlier to work on the people's business, it would be an interesting competition. Um, but this governor uh, knows a good deal when he sees it, and he knows a good investment when he sees it, and uh, I think he understands that this is, is in fact, uh, where medicine is gonna be in the not too distant future, and, and this governor is obsessed in a good way with making Virginia competitive with every other state, with every other nation, um, and that is no less true in the field of medicine. So we're gonna build something great here, and people are gonna come and we're gonna save lives. And so with that, His Excellency, Governor Youngkin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, good afternoon. How much fun is this? I understand that there was only, we're one of six events happening today, so I can't wait to see the next one. Uh, because this one is extraordinary. And I just appreciate President Ryan and uh, Rector Clement, thank you for your kind remarks. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, I have to say that there are partnerships uh, that I enjoy. The top of the list, of course, is with my amazing wife. Uh, but I so enjoy working together with you. And so thank you. Thank you. Um, to Dr. Kent and all of the teams that have worked so tirelessly to bring this idea forward and now to fruition, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know President Ryan has a theme, this theme of pairing together greatness and goodness, and it extends beyond this great university. And I can't, again, think of a better example a more salient example 
than the opening of this very institute. I'm deeply grateful for all of the work that has gone into this. But we do need to again acknowledge that this was an extensive effort from so many people. And our colleagues in the General Assembly bought in, bought in early, and bought in holistically. And the leadership from so many different folks reminds us that it does take all of us to get great things done. But it takes vision to get started. And I want to say thank you. Thank you to the Mannings. Paul and Diane, I want to thank you for your willingness to step forward with more than a vision, but a catalytic gift to make it happen. And it's when a catalytic gift is paired with a vision, a vision to change the future, that we will look back at some point in the future and say, yes, that day, that day where an announcement was made was the beginning of transforming capabilities and knowledge that transform lives. And so we should all remember this moment because that is an exciting time to be in. And finally, when all of that comes together and then we execute against it, this tremendous contribution will be one that does something more than builds a building and provides jobs and advances research. But there will be a life, a life that will be saved, that could not have been touched or saved in any other way than the singularity of the work that will be done here. And that one life, that one moment, is the time when we all look back to the vision that started with you and with you. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to highlight this opportunity for us to celebrate the strength of this great university. This community has been through a lot. In the face of tragedy, the horrific shootings of Devin and Lavelle and Deshaun, three kings as they were described when we were all together. A community that faced that with resilience and strength, the community that wrapped your arms together, not just intertwined, but around one another, and looked forward to a better day. It's a community that represents the best of us all. And so today we have a tremendously happy moment to be together. And I think that those two days are linked in so many ways because it's a community that stands strong and it's a community that looks forward. This institute that we celebrate today will not only be a tremendous asset to UVA, to Charlottesville, but its impact will stretch across the Commonwealth, across the nation, and around the world, Virginia, not just the University of, but the Commonwealth of, will be a leader, will be viewed as being the best, the epicenter. And we can build on that to not just create jobs, but to make the Commonwealth a destination, a destination for research, a destination for care, a destination for hope. So yes, we'll cut a ribbon today. I'm excited about that. I like cutting ribbons. The ceremonial first step saying that we're open for business. But what comes tomorrow and the day after and the day after that is what's so truly exceptional. Because it's the vision of this institute that will be fully realized and Virginians will have yet another reason to stay within our commonwealth to receive the best possible health care, particularly in emerging fields like cellular and gene therapy, 
nanotechnology, and targeted drug delivery. These are things that used to be dreams and aspirations that will become a reality right here in this amazing hub of research and realization. I love the word translation. As we translate research into reality, as we translate visions into fulfilling those aspirations, this institute will do all of that and create hundreds of new jobs here at the University of Virginia that generate economic activity spurning companies that will fulfill the translation opportunity to deliver all of this great research. And beyond that, beyond the research, we hope to see manufacturing and we will see capital flow and we will see an ecosystem that builds upon itself. That is going to be so special to watch. One of the most important and most enjoyable parts of this privilege that I have every day as serving all of you as your governor is having the opportunity to convince companies and people as to why they should locate here in our great commonwealth to build their lives, to build their children's lives, to expand their corporate operations here in Virginia. Because nothing is more rewarding than hearing those simple words of, you're hired. And I look forward to those words being discussed over dinner tables across Virginia, but also here, more importantly, in Charlottesville with this institute, but with companies moving here to expand our capacity to say those exact words. And while each one of the announcements that I have the privilege to make is unique and meaningful, it's unique and meaningful to communities, to the Commonwealth, to the businesses, to their employees, there is something very, very, very special about this one. Very special because it is a family stepping forward and making a catalytic expression of their belief in the success of this institute. It's a university bringing every ounce of its capabilities to the success of this institute. And yes, it's the Commonwealth of Virginia recognizing that the part we can play is extraordinarily important as well. Pairings, greatness and goodness, all coming together to tackle some of the most challenging challenging issues and questions that face humankind today. So, you know, this, inspira this inspiration and motivation isn't felt for the first time in this amazing building. Thomas Jefferson founded this place to propel it to become one of the most important academic institutes in the world. And it's step like this. It's moments like this that I think allow us to say, yes, Mr. Jefferson, we are marching there. Folks, it's so fun to be with you. It's fun to see Virginia do extraordinary things. It's fun to see our capabilities come together to take bold steps into the future. And as your governor, it's extraordinarily humbling to be part of it. I'm proud of what we're doing today. I'm proud of the efforts that have been brought together. And I am so excited to see the great things that are yet to come. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. You all have a hand in this. But I particularly want to thank the Mannings one last time. May God bless you in all that you do. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for your vision. And on behalf of Virginians and Americans and citizens of the world, we thank you for what will happen at this most extraordinary institute. Thank you very much.
So I, I'm Craig Kent, uh, CEO of UV Health, and, and I feel like I drew the short straw of having to go after the governor and before our honored guest. <laughs> but, but great to be here, and, and thanks to all of you for being here today. And as the governor said, so many of you in this room have been instrumental in making this happen. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking President Ryan, our Rector Clement, the Board of Visitors, for their vision to make UVA preeminent amongst universities and academic health systems, thanks to an amazing investment in translational research and clinical care. I would also like to extend my thanks to Governor Youngkin, uh, Speaker Gilbert, who had the vision and the wisdom to support a Center for Biotechnology for the Commonwealth of Virginia that would catalyze innovation throughout the state, stimulate collaboration amongst the state's major research universities, and provide cutting edge care for Virginia's almost nine million citizens. Biomedical research is advancing at a pace never before seen. It's estimated that the doubling time for new knowledge in the field of medicine is two and a half months. So, so can you imagine that? Two and a half months from today, we'll know twice as much about the medical field as we do at this very moment. There's so much innovation and new technology and the consequence of this is a greater understanding of a diseases and potential treatments. The beneficiaries of this rapid increase of knowledge are our patients, their families, and of course, all of the people in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Over 850,000, or one in 10 Virginians, suffer from a rare disease. Moreover, millions of Virginians suffer from common diseases that have no cure, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, so many others. Many of these are innocent children or the socioeconomically disadvantaged. Although advances in medicine in this century have been profound, there are still more than 9,500 diseases that are without a cure. We stand at the cusp of a revolution in healthcare. Biotechnology will change how medicine is delivered and the outcomes for our patients. Not in the distant future, but right now and in the coming years, we already see it happening. The annual economic impact for the U.S. bioscience industry is $2.9 trillion. This is only superseded by the size of the healthcare industry, which is annually $4.3 trillion. Both biotech and healthcare continue to grow at an exponential rate. With our new biotech unit, Virginia is positioning itself to be a benefactor of that incredible growth. While the economics are important, the most exciting impact of this biotechnology re revolution, from my perspective as a healthcare provider and a healthcare leader, is how biotechnology will save lives and improve the quality of life of our patients. With increased investment in the pursuit of new innovations, imagine how incredible the future will be for the citizens of Virginia. And this will all be happening right here on grounds at the University of Virginia. Universities and academic medical centers across the country are playing an increasingly important role in translational therapeutics. The Paul and Diane Manning Institute will be designed to fill the gap between the research bench and the hospital bedside by focusing on the rapid development of innovative medical therapies. What will be accomplished at this institute? The recruitment of over 100 new physicians and scientists focused on translational research. These researchers will bring to the Commonwealth annually up to $150 million of externally funded research, enhancing the Commonwealth's economics and reputation. The creation of a life sciences ecosystem that will attract world-class talent and the influx of healthcare and biotech companies. We will accelerate the development of innovative, revolutionary new clinical therapies, including cellular and gene therapies, nanotechnology, targeted drug delivery, positioning UVA and Virginia to be at the forefront of cutting edge next generation medicine. And most importantly, very most importantly, the promise that Virginians will no longer need to leave the Commonwealth to receive world-class, state-of-the-art clinical care. There's no better way to demonstrate what the Manning Biotechnology Institute will bring to Virginia than to tell two patient stories. I'd like to first introduce you to Colin. He's nine years old. He was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia in 2018. Colin presented to his pediatricians with generalized pain, and after an evaluation by UVA Health pediatricians, his parents received the phone call that everyone fears. Colin has cancer. The standard treatment for leukemia is induction chemotherapy which is highly toxic. 
Collins' chemotherapy produced severe complications, including pancreatitis, the need for a ventilator, the need for a feeding tube. This was devastating to Colin, of course, but also for his family. But with treatment, Collins' cancer went into remission. But the relief did not last long. Within a few months, the cancer was back. UVA Health was then able to offer Colin a cutting-edge treatment for childhood leukemia that was only recently developed. The treatment is called chimeric antigen receptor or CAR T cell therapy. This is how it works. We remove a patient's immune cells and then modify these cells in a special laboratory called a GMP facility. UVA is amongst an elite group of institutions nationwide with a GMP program. Outside the patient's body and in this facility, cells are taught to selectively target and kill the patient's own cancer cells. These trained killer cells were then infused back into Colin. We held our breath and waited. Within a month, the cancer had completely disappeared. And two years later, to this day, Colin remains in remission. Colin is now an active, fun-loving child with no sign of leukemia, thanks to Dr. Trey Lee, the pediatric oncology team at UVA, and most importantly, the advances that we've spoken about today many times in medical science. I would next like to introduce you to Isabel, Spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, is a disease of young children. It's produced by a mutation in a gene that manufactures a protein that's necessary to, for, for muscles to mature. For those who are born with this mutation, muscles atrophy, become weak, and the majority of children who have this syndrome don't survive beyond the age of two. During my tenure as dean of the School of Medicine at the Ohio State University and Nationwide Children's Hospital, a novel gene therapy was developed there which replaces the abnormal non-functioning gene in patients with SMS. Animal studies were encouraging and with the backing of an investor whose uh, name you will recognize, Paul Manning, yes our paths did cross in a previous life, this technology moved quickly into clinical trials. Fast forward to Isabel, a patient at UVA Children's Hospital born in January of 2019. Her family and pediatricians found that she had difficulty with movement and she was not thriving, and the diagnosis of SMA was made. After an infusion of the SMA gene therapy, which replaced the absent protein, Isabel showed dramatic improvement and is now living a functional life. Before the therapy, she was not able to stand, but she is now an active child chased around the house by her parents another miracle at the UVA Children's Hospital, the result of the advancements of medical science and technology. President Ryan already introduced our generous benefactors, Paul and Diane Manning. While philanthropic gifts are commonplace at a nationally acclaimed university as beloved and as prestigious as the University of Virginia, the $100 million gift contributed by Paul and Diane has exceeded any of our wildest hopes and dreams. In fact, one of Paul's frequent sayings is, go big or go home. Although he uses these words when referring endearingly to our new biotechnical institute, and I'm so excited about that, his contribution of $100 million has lived up to that adage as well. What differentiates Paul from other donors? It turns out he is one of the world's experts in what we are all about to create. Not only is he contributing his resources, but we also have the benefit of his expertise and worldwide connections in the biotechnical field. Although I've been a physician and a researcher for the past 30 years, on most days, although I try, I can't keep up with Paul, his energy, his innovation, and his ingenuity. It has been wonderful over the past year and a half to become Paul's friend and a partner in this initiative. With Paul as our supporter, I am confident that we at UVA and the Commonwealth of Virginia will soon have one of the top biotechnical institutes in the country. Paul and Diane, I am so thankful for your vision, devotion, compassion, and enthusiasm. Please, everyone, extend an incredibly warm welcome to Paul and Diane Manning. So uh, I have this long, uh, two, actually a very small, short speech compared to these guys, but uh, 
But they've already said everything that's in this. Um, and I, and I, uh, I may read it because I, I put like 25 minutes into it. Um, <laughs> so yesterday was my anniversary of 38 years with to Diane. And, and, and there's no better way to celebrate. She's been such a great partner for me, and, uh, and I wouldn't be here without her, so just for that. Um, and this isn't in the speech, but I figured since you guys said everything, I'd say a few other things. So, um, um, Brian and Court, my uh, son and daughter-in-law, had this son saved here a year ago at UVA from the doctors in cardiac medicine. They, he had a very, a, a real serious cardiac problem, and they did surgery underneath his arm, and they went in there, and they replaced one of the veins in, uh, what is it, uh, artery, thanks, and then, uh, <laughs> And he was saved. And uh, that's a fantastic thing. That's a really fantastic thing that we were able to see that happen here at the university. And that's why we're lucky to be here. The thing that uh, Craig was talking about um, was Avexis. is a company we went in five years ago. And I saw this uh, um, gentleman by the name of Brian Casper. Brian Casper was a doctor there. And he couldn't raise any money for gene therapy because the Gelsinger child um, up in Pennsylvania, Dr. Wilson treated him and he died because they used a virus that the, 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 the child has seen before and he had immune response and so nobody wanted to do gene therapy. And so I went there and saw Brian Casper and Sean Stalford, who's been fantastic for us, helped us, helped me get there to see this guy, Nationwide Children, where Craig worked. And I went for probably 40 minutes, right, Sean? We went in and saw this video of these pigs walking up this ramp. The ones on the right had been treated, and the ones on the left had not been treated. And the ones on the, and the, ones on the right were falling off the ramp, and the ones on the left with this gene therapy were walking up the ramp. And Brian Casper said, I don't have any money. He says, I'm going to go out of business. Gene therapy is going to fail in America. Would you give me $5 million and, uh, for a $20 million valuation in this company? And, uh, and I walked him over to the side room and I said to him, I said, Brian, is this like made up stuff on the video or something? Are these pigs were trained on the left? And he said, no, no, this is, this is absolutely true. So I said, so I walked out of that conference room and I told Sean, we're gonna give this guy five million. He says, any more due diligence? And I said, no, because if, it does, if these 1,200 kids a year are gonna die, then it's philanthropic or it's commercial, but one of the ways we're gonna get these kids a chance and long story short, we sat closely by the phone when the first baby was injected, no immune response. And then, the, three days later, no immune response. Two weeks later, three weeks later, Dr. Mendel calls us and says, by the way, I don't know, but it looks like this baby's starting to move. And this baby had 12 months to live. Long story shorter, three months later, the baby starts doing natural stuff, doing its own, walking around like a normal kid, crawling around like a normal kid. Six, five years later, the kid's in first grade, running around with the other kids. Now 1,200 kids get treated a year in America that get saved. Over 3,000 kids a year around the world get treated, and it's only because of cellular medicine, cell therapy, that what he was talking about, that these kids get saved. And it's so important that we do this here in Virginia because we have the chance to change lives, dramatically change lives, you know, with it for Alzheimer's, ALS, sickle cell, blindness, hearing. We're gonna change those lives here and we're gonna have patients coming here from, from Virginia for sure. And one of the things I said is a patient in Virginia that may not have the, 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 the wherewithal to be able to go to the Mayo, MD Anderson, Hopkins, Duke, Boston, those people are going to get in their cars and drive to here and get the treatments that they would get there that wouldn't get these treatments. And these kids with sickle cell anemia now can get gene therapy that they wouldn't get normally, and they can live now by getting treated at Charlottesville. So that's an important thing, because now it's not available here, and it will be available here. So I have a lot more to say. It's a trillion dollar industry. We're going to bring companies here. We're going to have them set up here. We're going to have them partner with the university. We're going to have them invest in manufacturing. We're going to invest in the science. And we are going to explode because who wants to be in Boston when you can be in Virginia? Yeah, totally right. uh, I, 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 I. <laughs> Anyways, listen, you can't do this without these two. I mean, 
I mean, Jim Ryan could actually now be a medical salesperson. He's learned so much about this stuff. He wants to quit. He could sell biotech equipment or anything. I've never seen anybody learn so much. That's why I can't give this speech, because he, he knows too much already. <laughs> but thanks to the speaker, thanks to Witt, thanks to Jim, thanks for the governor, thanks to Mark, thanks for all of you guys. I appreciate Don Mossman's help, all the PBM team that gave me the opportunity to get here, all the people, Karen Rendleman, all the Mark Llewellyn, all the people that over the years got us to invest in the university, got us to, we've been doing it for 15 years, got us to invest, give money, be happy, they execute well, they hit their milestones, they know what they're doing. This is gonna be the most successful biotech institute in the country, maybe the world and we are gonna drive forward, and we're all gonna be thrilled that we're part of it. So I can't thank everybody enough. I didn't, I didn't read it. So. I don't know about you, but I want to grab a shovel and go start digging, get this thing started right now. Um, so thanks again to all of you for being here. Thanks to everyone who has helped us get to this point. Um, Mr. Governor, Mr. Speaker, thank you for honoring us by being here with us today. Um, and one last thanks to the two who made this happen, Paul and Diane Manning. Thank you so much. <laughs>